the unmistakable noise of all of those balls being split apart. It is day three of the US Open. Over the first couple of days, we've really enjoyed ourselves. We've seen a lot of elite players. Frankly, though, on many occasions, it was a mismatch against enthusiastic but overmatched amateurs. Now, as Joshua Fillers, walk on music, said, never more appropriate. Let's get down to business. Indeed, Phil. You see Pelahanovic just bobbles the one, tried to bank it. Filler has a kick of sorts here, but he might have to manipulate the angle somewhat with a bit of backspin. Let's see if he comes below the five. And was able to make it and just leave the cue ball in the jaws. Yeah, wanted to catch that one slightly thinner. But I think he'll be very relieved that the cue ball remained on the table. a difficult shot but a something of a rare miss for filler and let's see if uh, Pelahanovic can capitalize and, and get off to a good start here I believe the three passes the eight surveying where he'd like the cue ball races to 11 today Phil as you said some of the amateurs have been weeded out things start to get really exciting now a lot of great matches today closely contested matches and this is the first real tester for filler this kid's a great player so here we go Am I seeing this right? Did he foul on time? Or is that incorrect? Well, nothing's been said by the referee, Brendan Moore, who is very much on top of these things. He must have called an extension and, and perhaps we didn't. Okay, he's okay. We need a bit of a forceful stroke to punch the cue ball into the rail and out to about where he's standing now. And he's done very nicely. Yeah, Philip is the favorite in this match, quite rightly, Nick. But we've seen this year that Sanyan Filovanovic, at the age of 20, he's from Bosnia-Herzegovina, He's gaining an awful lot of big time experience and exposure. Yeah, absolutely. He's played in the, the World Masters, the World Cup, the World Nine Ball Championship on the Matchroom Pool Series. And now here he is stateside. You can just really see it the way he goes about his business that, you know, for such a young guy, Obviously has a tremendous amount of seasoning. Touch thick, but he's okay. Not hasty. And although he's inevitably nervous, He's not showing it. I agree, Phil. His his uh, body language is on point. If he can clear these, just to, to get on the board versus filler, get going, and you know, as we've harped on all week, with these guys, when when they get a little momentum and and they have the break, you know, things can happen. They can they can really run racks and, and relegate their opponents to the chair. So. Let's see, a hair touchy here, he has to pull it back, a little low left. Yeah, nice stroke there, great start for uh, Palanovic.
Sanyan Perlovanovic immediately Winger. underlining what he's capable of. He's only 20 years of age. He won the World Under-17 title, beating Roy Robbie Capito from Hong Kong in the final 9-1, and he is a coming force in this world of nine-ball tour. 256 players started out in the championship. By the end of today, only 48 will remain. Players must use a forceful break. It's a 30-second shot clock. Each player's allowed one 30-second extension per rack. All matches from now on in are a race to 11, apart from the final, which is a race to 13, best of 25. And the pocket size, just 4.25 inches, which is tighter than has been historical. Yeah, absolutely. The equipment is uh, very serious as far as the conditions. Not a lot of wiggle room to miss hit shots and, and so on. Right two. Sanji and Pelivanovic to break, leading one right to nil. goes in the one banks three rails around the table and he's looking at it now it's not totally clear if the eight impedes the path to making the one in the top right it looks like it doesn't and if it doesn't what a nice look this is for Sanyin to extend the lead well my take from his body language is that the the eight is just in the way I believe you're right Manufacturing that shot, Nick, he deserved better than he got. He did. That was beautifully executed. Jumped over the eight, drew the cue ball back ever so slightly. Unfortunately, he hit the eight so full in the face. My word, he's jumping again, Phil. The eight is so close to the cue ball. Vigorously chalking here. Let's see if he can do it again, guys. Tell you what, I mean, this is a nice little start to this rack for uh, Palahanovic. Two jump shots in a row. This one was just really sublime. I mean, the eight and the cue ball were so close to each other. Just outstanding what they can do with the jump cues nowadays. Yes, and craning over like that, his alignment was even more compromised. Really incredible. This is a player who was a youthful prodigy. He got to the quarterfinals of a Euro Tour event in Klagenfurt in Austria when he was 16, losing only 9-8 in that quarterfinal. Yeah, incredible. We can tell that he's, you know, up to task, to say the least. Here to win and uh, off to a terrific start. Likes to play the six on the side. Might have come up a hair short, so he may have to come around three rails or Possibly just follow off with a little inside spin and accept a little bit of a longer shot on the seven. Beauty.
perhaps just a hair short. I believe where he placed his cue down, he's, he's thinking about going with high right here to bounce off the rail and spin below the side to play the nine in the bottom left. That's unfortunate. A cell phone goes off. Gives a little gaze to the crowd. Nicely navigated here. What a start for Pelahanovic. Filler finds himself with a real test here in this race to 11, day three of the U.S. Open. In each of Joshua Filler's first two matches here, he only dropped two racks. Well, he's lost two racks in this match, and he's yet to get off the mark. Young Pelovanovic showing what he's capable of. He's a multiple European junior champion at 8, 9 and 10 ball. And I think the experience of playing on the, the main table at the World Masters, the World Cup and the World Championship has really stood him in good stead. And Joshua Filler sitting there knowing that now, as we said before, the serious business has begun. Let me just tell you about some stuff that occurred last night after we went off air. You might have seen Christina to catch losing to Kelly Fisher on the main table. Well, Christina is still in the tournament because she beat Vincent Cimarelli 9-8 on the loser's side. Another player who played on the main table, Daniel Dagendot, is out, though. He was beaten 9-8 by Jesus Atencio from Venezuela. And the biggest name on the Back one last side of the draw so far, Omar Al Shaheen, runner-up to the World Nine right Ball Championship. Right He's still in because he beat Nathan Wallace, 9-4. Now watch the two ball, and he's been banking the one three rails around so far, maybe playing position in the top right from which he stands. Two ball in, one ball, one, two, three around. And once again, he'll possibly be pulling that jump cue out. And again, it's the eight possibly impeding the path to the one. So he's showing his consistency break-wise. I mean, he's dangerous. Maybe he can go rail first as well. Let's see. His break-off is basically following a pattern we use in everyday life, that phrase. I'm behind the eight ball. <laughs> That's right. He's chalking up the jump cue again. Of course, he showed his form executing this technique in rack two. Ball stroke. I believe foul ball was hand. declared, ball in hand. So Filler will be Stop delighted to see that. And let's see if he can get to work. Down 2-0, race to 11, but clearly playing a player who's undaunted and up to task digressions, but this might be the best pool player in the world at this current time, Joshua Filler. Wants to leave an angle on the six to get back to the seven. Such a powerful player here, so confident, so quick, such a great stroke. So much knowledge about the game. Plays position in a very efficient but powerful sort of manner. Southpaw. And it looks like 2-1. Yes, Perlovanovic went to the jump well uh, once yeah, right. too often. And when he made the foul shot, it was quite clear that Filler had a, a golden chance to win the rack, which he did, and so he's off the mark. Perlovanovic, though, still in front. The defending champion has a, an early scare.
It is moving day at the US Open. Day three, so many phenomenal matches around this arena. Look at the, the quality on display there. The world Masters champion, Alex Kazakis. He's currently taking on Evita Putnik, who defeated Earl Strickland earlier in the tournament. Alvin Auschen, the World Nine Ball Championship. He's got a, a tough match against Viktor Zelinski, who's capable of beating anyone. A double world champion, Torsten Homan, up against Miesko Fortunski and Fedor Gorscht, the world nine ball champion in 2019. He's taking on a, a fine Filipino player by the name of Roberto Gomez. And don't forget Thank you, right Shane Van Boning against Moritz Neuhausen, one of the finest right juniors in the world of pool. First look at Filler's break. <laughs> A little bit rare here to come up dry. Cue ball just nestles in the top right corner, so Pelahanovic will a long ways away to the one ball. Let's see what he elects to come with. If he takes it on in the top left, it's awfully difficult. He might have to elevate slightly or possibly careen into the five. Let's defer. and Joshua will try to leave a return safety of sorts. Perhaps one, two underneath the one. Maybe coming off towards the green six or he could go one rail off of the bottom rail and bank the one towards the six and send the cue ball up table. Kind of a one pocket style shot. Or he can just cross bank the one in the side, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, see what he has for us on this deuce. Yeah, where the two is, there's an argument to say that might have been an unwanted fluke, but I suppose it's better in than hitting the far jaw of the middle pocket and coming back to leave a possible chance for his opponent. Absolutely, and beautiful cue ball control there from Joshua. He was probably, like you said, trying to Extension, go just above please. the side to leave a return safety, but he controlled the, the cue ball so nicely. Hang it up. In all likelihood, Pelahanovic will maybe pull that jump cue out again to to jump over that edge of of the pink four, or perhaps he can just see the two straight away. Extension, Extension please. Can he see enough of the bottom rail to kick at it? the slight sort of swerve stroke. He's applying maximum right hand spin to just curve around the three. Foul stroke. And he, and he curved it Falling up. just a bit too much. A welcome sight for filler. And that is a classic Start case of clock, someone please. on the main match table for the first time. It's very reactive and he applied too much side spin, far too much actually. Yeah, players have said that this table has its own characteristics that you were just alluding to, and, and that he did, Phil. Runs yeah. into the eight, but no problems. Yeah, we see it in snooker all the time where players have had a really good run in a tournament on an outside table. Then they come onto the main table and find that the conditions are completely alien. You would never imagine it, but it does happen. One guy who knows all about this main table is uh, Joshua Filler. Leaves a perfect angle to play the seven in the side.
Just like that, we're all tied up. Yeah, and now, like the first two rounds, it's basically reduced to a race to nine because the first four here have been shared, and so that target of 11, let's all start again, and nine more required. Just before that rack, I gave you a rundown of the the big matches currently taking place. Well, let's give you some scores. Mickey Kraus, the young Danish player, he's 5-0 up on the US Moscone Cup mainstay of recent years. Billy Thorpe, how wow. about that? What a start. Nayuki Oi, 2-1 up on Roland Garcia. Mateusz Snigowski from Poland, 2-1 up on Dennis Graber from Estonia. Shea Chia Chen finds himself 3-1 up on Jason Shaw, the 2017 US Open champion. Max Lechner, fine player from Austria. He leads Daniel Schneider 3-1. Joshua Phil, it's a break. Two racks each. And as you said before, Phil, uh, you know, today is, is moving day of sorts, and, and the, the great player is a nice break here, of course. And the great players that we're accustomed to seeing run so deep in these things and, and take events down will really be tested today. Because there's a lot of hungry, young, you know, not and not so young, just international players who are all here looking for a, for a little slice of the glory. So when you're tested like that, some of these guys have had fairly easy draws. Filler hasn't really been tested yet. Shaw hasn't really been tested. Let's see. A lot of people are down here looking to, to play some world-class pool. Yeah, quickly, two more scores for you. Dennis Ocolio over on table two. He's leading 5-1 against Corey Jewell. That match, as always on table two, is available on the Matchroom YouTube channel. And Chang Junlin, who is a formidable sort from Chinese Taipei, finds himself fallen ahead of Jeffrey Ignacio from the Philippines. Extension call. Ocolio duel is a fantastic match on paper. As you said, 5-1, and it, it looks like Dennis is running out as we speak. He's off to a dynamite start. He looked like he was in top form yesterday. Tricky one here for Pelahanovic. Perhaps trying to kick it in. It's a little bit thick, and uh, this will not be going his way. Another nice look for Filler. The one to the pink four is slightly awkward. If he runs into the eight, the angle on the four is, is fairly steep in the side. He's trying to manufacture something, either drawing off of the eight or possibly even playing the one in the corner. There you see on table two, you called it. I can't go. Now six one up on Corey Jewell. That's more than halfway to his target for Corey Jewell. Colio is right now Dennis the Menace. <laughs> he certainly is. I mean, he looked like Dennis the Menace yesterday, too. Wants to draw just above the nine and out. Leave himself a little angle on the six to get to the seven. He's done nicely with it. Touch short for most of us, but he doesn't look too concerned. Always looked just a wee bit short of pace, but it shouldn't be any major issue. That's exactly right, Joshua Phil. Right. 3-2. Yeah, Filler on the money in the last three racks. He was 2-0 down, but he did not panic. You wouldn't expect him to. Now, talking about being on the money, 
And this is what they're playing for. It's a total prize fund of 300,000 US dollars. Those who finish 97th or better are guaranteed some cash. But of course, the likes of Filler, they're thinking about the major jackpot here in this casino. To the winner goes 50,000 US dollars. To the runner up, 25,000. Yeah, we're in the Harrah's Resort in Atlantic City, New Jersey. The world of pool is convened here. And now this tournament from right here six. on in is going to be Joshua very Phillips interesting indeed. Leading three rights to two. Does the point, based on that expression on Filler's face, it looks like the point does impede a clean side at the one. Will he pull out the jump cue? Pretty tough for a lefty. Were he righty, maybe he would jump over the point. But uh, as a lefty, it's very awkward. He's weighing it over. Maybe he can see enough to just thin the outside of it, bank it to the top rail, and, and play a safety of some sort. Left Pelahanovic a look. Let's see if the if the pink four impedes the uh, path of the one or not. It looks close from here. And the way he's looking at it, he definitely has a shot at the one. He's trying to decide where he'd like to be for the three. Looks fairly natural. Just pocket the one, come between the extension place. Pink four and the purple five to play the three, either in the middle side or the same pocket, which he's playing the one. Remember, as you said before, Phil, these are four and a quarter inch pockets, so you don't have a lot of wiggle room here to miss hit. Well, he caught that so thin, he actually caught it again coming back. And if he's got away with that, he's been extremely fortunate. Yeah, that's right. He, he almost missed the one on the way in and caught it from behind and he has gotten away with it in some capacity and let's see what filler has for us and in, in regards to a kick safety of sorts uh, what a good little stroke he put on that small little hitch at the end appropriate amount of spin leaves a return safe this is certainly almost an underrated part of his game he just has so much firepower we we all think of him as this offensive juggernaut but his his safety play and, and kicking game is extraordinary as well he's right on point with all of these Pelahanovic will try to leave a return safety of sorts okay Filler will have a decision here whether to take this on or, or maybe bank it to the top rail towards the nine and try to bring the cue ball one, two, three, possibly even behind the pink four. See what he decides to do. Such a great shot maker, of course, he could play it in the top Extension, right, please. but rather difficult shot. Goes with a third route, and he's left a little air here for, for Pelahanovic to maybe gain some initiative and either take on the thin cut or play a return safety of his own. Sometimes it's hard to tell just how thin it is from our vantage point, but the way he's looking at it, it looks like he is taking it on. Everything in this match in the air. The one thing, though, that you can say without fear or favor hasn't the intensity cranked up. Truly. So over 
about the one. Bridge hand resting in the corner pocket. Ugh. <laughs> so I don't know if the crowd didn't realize how good of a shot that was, but to come one, two, three like that just underneath the six, it's a thin cut too, made it look so easy. really exudes confidence, doesn't he? He does, and also concentration, I think, this morning. He's looked exactly what he is, a player who's desperate, not just to win this thing, of course, but to, to retain the title and join that pantheon of greats who've done so. Absolutely. Hair straight, so. Yeah, he's fine. And uh, just like that, he'll slide into a 4 2 lead. Really effortlessly shook off the 2 0 deficit. His first chance at the table, he capitalized. And uh, we're starting to see why he won the last U.S. Open he played. Yeah, we're seeing a few ragged edges from Sanyan Perlovanovic, and we're seeing intensity from Joshua Fuller, hence the scoreline. He leads by four racks to two. The defending champion suddenly looking like his old self.
this is a vast room at the Harrow's Resort in Atlantic City. 33 tables in here. Already today, we've seen the start of two rounds. The, the second round on the winner's side, the third round on the loser's side. Leading four right to So six. many contests simultaneously in action. But of course, the, the focus of attention, quite rightly, is on the defending champion, who's beginning to prosper. Yeah, that he is. Wing ball flies in. One ball travels around the table nicely for Joshua. He'll have a real look of sorts to extend the lead. A little bit of work here. Maybe he can play it in the corner and just kind of stop there, slide over, or punch it to the rail and out. He's surveying where he'd like to be on the three. As nice as that the pink four is, is near the three. Cheated the pocket ever so slightly. The, the ball bobbling was intentional to retain a, a nice angle here to, to work with. Even that little stroke there was so nicely done. That little drag stroke, kind of just less than full on draw. He's overcooked this one a bit. Try to just slow roll this in. Extension, please. Bounce to the rail and out. He's used his extension. Oh, he's overcut it, Phil. So great look for Palavanovic to stop the bleeding. Down 4-2 and been in the chair for quite some time. He needs to shake off those last few mistakes and get back to work. Yeah, it was a touchy shot from Filler, but we weren't expecting him to miss it, and certainly not like that. Indeed. Five to the six is a bit tricky. Let's see which route he prefers. Comes one, two across, and I think he's done very nicely with this shot. Stroke. Vital moments in this match. That it was, and he's done well. Should clean this up and take it to 4 3. We have a match on our hands. Indeed, we do. Filler's four rack winning sequence is interrupted. Now then, down in the arena, here's our roving reporter, Carl Boys. Cheers, Phil. Thanks for that. Yeah, just behind me, I'm near table two. Plenty of action going on. Dennis Orcolo, he is a man on a mission. He's breaking unbelievable. I've watched the last four racks. He is playing some phenomenal pool. He is drilling Corey Jewell 10-1 at the minute. And next to him, Billy Thorpe. He was actually 5-0 down against Mickey Kraus. Mickey Krause is hotly tipped to be a big star in the future. He's from Denmark. Jason Shaw, he's playing Shea Chia Chin. On the table next to them two, that's locked up 4-4. Jason was 3-1 down. It's all going on. There's plenty of superstars, champions, legends over this side of the arena. Back to you guys in comms. Thanks, Cole. Rack eight. Sanji and Pelevani reach to break. Trailing by four racks to three. So can Pelevanovic get back onto level terms? Three ball down. And unfortunately the five just 
gets in the way of a clear sight to pocket the one in the top right. So he'll need to play a safety of some sorts, probably just roll on the five. Pose a question of filler. If he does play that shot where he just banks the one into this side rail and down and tries to roll on the five, naturally he'll want to get as close to the five as he can, perhaps even freeze him. That would be really ideal. He's looking at some other stuff, though, so he might have something offensive in mind, perhaps a carom or the way he's queuing. Not exactly sure what he's doing here. He's going for the cross corner, possibly make it slash safety involved. And it looks from this vantage point like he's gotten away with this in some capacity. Two comfortable wins so far for Polovanovic. He beat Evan Lunder and Mohamed Daydat, both 9-3. But of course, this is a, a massive step up in quality of opposition. Well, that's just outstanding there. I mean, kicked into the rail, hit the one, stopped the cue ball, banked the one, two rails around. And he's left Pelahanovic behind the pink four ball and he'll need to play a return safety of sorts as well. Filler's kick safety strategy type game continues to, to just be exemplary stuff. It shows why he's such a great player. Alejandrovic goes one, two behind the one and he's trying to leave a return safety of his own and it looks like he's come up short. Maybe the six just got in the way, but I don't think so. And Pelahanovic, his body language also speaks to uh, that notion as well. Some work from the one to the two, though. Well. Crunch. Nick, you just used a word there, exemplary. That applies to what we've just seen over on table two Dennis Ocolio has defeated Corey Jewell, thrashed him 11-1. Tell you what, man. I mean, you know, Orculio, he he's in his early 40s. Everybody knows what a great player he is. But I was talking to Jeremy Jones. We just went over to the pool room the other night, and, and he put Dennis right up there just on his picks to win. And I live in Vegas, so, you know, I have the pleasure of kind of going down to the pool room of Fairmount and, and watching Dennis do his thing. It's his home pool room of sorts. This guy is nasty, Dennis, so this is going to be a good U.S. Open as it unfolds. But speaking of nasty, looking at it right now, Filler, I mean, just showing us all of his arsenal to start. And this kid he's playing is, is formidable, to say the least. Great player, but he just has a way of reminding you the difference between great, elite, and then the very best in the world. If he can clear these, he'll go up 5-3 in this race to 11 here on day three. The U.S. Open. We're in AC. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting in a groove now. What an excellent rack that was. First, the absolutely pinpoint kick, and then, when he'd forced the chance, the one ball to start things off out of the top draw, and from there, well, it was all pretty much routine because he's so skilled. That's the eight, and he dropped the cue ball on a sixpence, or in deferential terms to where we are, on a dime. Some more scores for you. Shea Chia Chin is now 5-4 up on Jason Shaw. Roland Garcia is leading the Court Jester, Naoki Oi, 6-4.
Mickey Krause, 6 4 up on Billy Thorpe, but as Carl Boys mentioned, it was 5 0 to Krause at one point, so Thorpe on the comeback trail. Matthias Nagotsky, 4 3 up on Dennis Grabber. Well, watch that three ball, watch that one ball careen around the table. The three is in, the one ball comes one, two. And did the eight just get in the way or not? He's looking at it now. Take a peek from the other side. Yes, so often on the break, the eight has been the fly in the ointment. It's been a bit odd. Uh, this is the third time that the eight has been the ball that's it's impeded the path to the one. I would imagine if he had a clear sight at this, he'd have shot already. He's looking at where he'd like to leave the one. You see where his tip is there. I believe he would like to bank the one to about there and impede the path somehow with either the two, eight, or six depending on the angle. He has to watch the double kiss, though, on a shot like this. It's it's not not so easy at all. And if he doesn't like that, he'll naturally be coming with something else. Extension, please. It isn't just the execution with this kid. It's the mind as well perhaps among the best queuing and also the highest nine ball IQs in the world, which obviously tournament after tournament, stop after push stop, out. starts to add up. And he's going with a push out. So let's see where he likes to leave him, maybe giving him a jump of sorts. So he's testing Pelahanovic to, to accept this jump shot, which based on what we saw in that first rack, or perhaps it was the second, he probably will. Hard to give it back to Filler. He's already down over it. Or he's looking at it, rather. Reset to 30 seconds, please. And he does give it back, so let's see, Phil. You know where the, the balls are? This jump shot is easier for a left-hander than a right-hander. That was very astute, by the way. Filler, you, you can be sure, knew those little intricacies. What beautiful execution here. The two to the four is far from simple. The eight is somewhat in the way. Maybe he can follow down. Looks like he's trying to cue it low. Oh, possibly he could follow between the eight, nine, and then between the nine, seven, but comes off of the eight and just kind of gambles a bit. And he'll have a look at a safety of sorts. Okay, done well. Extension, please. Box drop, falling. That's a bad mistake there. It wasn't really that difficult of a shot, and we certainly don't want to miss it so high like that. I'm sure Pelahanovic will be quite displeased with himself. He, he sort of, yeah, it was just a bad mistake. Happens, and uh, looks like 6-3, Phil. Yeah, I'd be astounded if it wasn't. I think it's Joshua Filler 
is good value for this lead. And I think the most important aspect of the way he's going about things, it's not so much he's outplaying Perlovanovic, but outthinking. Yeah, and you know, one can't quantify just how intimidating it is to, to be out there with him. And don't get me wrong, I mean, Pelovanovic is a great player who's who's up to task, but this this kid's energy filler, it, it's as if he just doesn't rattle whatsoever. Down 2-0, the first look he had, he got right to work. And it's 6-3 down here on the boardwalk. Yeah, filler doubling up on Perlovanovic twice now. First at 4-2 here at 6-3. The warning signs are blinking red for the Bosnian. What a morning so far at the US Open. So much going on. So many great players currently in action. It's day three, and the first result on the winner's side has been supplied by Dennis Okolio, who right, trounced Corey Jewell by 11 break. ranks right to one. Break. How about that? We've had an 11-1 result on the loser's side as well. Thomas Kaplan, fine Polish player. He brushed aside Chad Bazinet by the same score. Now we've mentioned Dennis Okolio's win, and I believe we can have a little chat with him. Dennis, congratulations, you're the first player through to win us round three. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I play great. I mean, it's really hard to play early in the morning, you know. So, uh, but 
I just really remember like back in early 2000s, so I used to play like this. So I just set it in my mind, adjustment. And you know, I mean, there's a shot luck, so I have to play quick. Dennis, you must have broken run a lot of racks there. That match was over in 55 minutes, 11 1. <laughs> I, mean, I never expect, you know, I mean, uh, uh, quick in. And I just, what I just put in my mind, just play. And, you know, I mean, uh, there's a shot lock, you have to play quick. And, you know, and nine ball is, you know, more easy rather than ten ball. So now I'm not really thinking about just packing the ball all the time. All the pool fans around the world know how good Dennis O'Connell is. You've lost in two finals. Is this your year? Two finals? Uh, You've lost in two US Open finals. Is this your year? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I just, I never, ex I just always think, like, play, you know, I mean, whatever come out, uh, I'm I'm really glad last two, uh, like, few years ago, you know, I got beat with Shane Van Boning and he played great. Well, we never know, you know, whatever, I mean, a lot of good players, uh, depends how we perform, you know, how I perform, but... Like I say, I, I, was, uh, I always try to perform well every day and to survive the match, you know. I'm never, I, I don't want to think about the last time. And today is today, so it's new, it's new for me. Yeah, it certainly looks like you're playing well, Dennis. We wish you the best of luck for the rest of the tournament. Good luck. Thank you, Carl. Nice job, Carl, and nice job, Joshua Filler. While Ocolio was talking, Filler was potting. And now he leads by seven racks to three. He's looking ominous. He really is. Nicky Kraus, 8-4 up now. 8-5 make it. Instantaneously, Thorpe has just won the 13th rack. So Kraus, 8-5 up, the young Dane. Roland Garcia, 6-5 up on Nayuki Oi. Four each in a, a slow burner. Matthias Nigotsky and Dennis Graver. Shea Chia Chen now leads Jason Shaw, 6-5. Momentum switching backwards and forwards there. Max Lechner, 6-3 up on Daniel Schneider. Lechner, I think, has got an outside chance of perhaps making it into the European Moscone Cup team. We will see Marco Schuter from New Zealand, originally from Holland. He leads Chris Reinholdt, 7-4. Alex Pagulayan and To Lian Han from Singapore. They're locked together at 5-5. Joshua Fuller to break, leading seven racks to three. And finally, Jeffrey Ignacio leads Chang Junlin, 7-6. Some excellent matches on the outer tables. And uh, it's like this one just doesn't get there. He looks a little disappointed. He, he, he likes to run racks, this kid, if, uh, if you guys haven't noticed. Came with a terrific little bank shot, by the way, as Orculio was uh, recounting that last match and what this open might hold for him. See what he comes with here. It's a, it's a bit delicate. Safety doesn't seem abundantly clear. Push out, Gold. He's going with a push out. Looks like he might be pushing to a jump again. Perhaps not. He was playing more cue ball there, but he wouldn't have been upset to see the six and the eight tie up. A typical kind of idea when when one pushes out is to tie up balls. You're leaving a great player an opportunity, so you you wouldn't mind making the rack more difficult were they to get things going. Pelahanovic with the jump cue out. And he does put it down. He might have to keep it out, although the cue ball freezes on the rail. Let's see if he elects to take a jump on from this position, as we can see the purple five. Fortunately for Palahanovic, has impeded the progress between the cue ball and the red three. Beautiful shot, just overstroked it slightly, I Extension, suppose, please. if you could even say that. Extension declared. The body language isn't resignation. He's far from that. But he's certainly frustrated. 
Yeah, and uh, he has the jump cue out again. This could alleviate some frustration if he could put this down. Just overcuts it. Cue ball careens around, as does the three, and, and they set up wonderfully for Mr. Filler. We must emphasize that young Sanjin is on the winner's side, so if he does lose this match, it's not the, the end of his tournament. But even on day three, if you go to the, the loser's side, boy, you will have to toil to make amends. An uphill climb, indeed. Gives a little tap to uh, communicate with the cue ball a bit. Touch more work than perhaps he would have liked. Oh my! Well, he tried to cheat the pocket to keep the cue ball off the, the side cushion to leave himself an easier nine ball, and because of that, the eight's gone astray. a small reminder of the four and a quarter pocket conditions. Nice stroke there from Pelahanovic. Sanjin Pelahanovic wins the rack. Well, Nick, it's the kind of mistake you do not anticipate from Joshua Fuller. And it's the kind of mistake that we've seen often turns matches. Will that be the case? He's still 7-4 ahead. He's got nothing to be overly concerned about, but that will be annoying. Now over on table two, there's the distinctive oh, queuing outside of the, the right eye of Neil Fine. He's up against Kelly Fisher. What a player he's been over the years. An absolute colossus when it comes to the Moscone Cup. He's won the MVP on multiple of occasions. He would love to capture this US Open title, and then basically his collection of major titles would be co complete. Yeah, he certainly would. As you said, his per performances in the Moscone Cup over the years have been legendary. Always seems Sanjin to show up. Trailing by seven, racks to four. Pelovanovic with the break here, down 7-4. Forgive the obvious, but he'd love to narrow that lead and relegate Filler to the chair. Watch the eight ball, watch the one ball. He'll try to play it where he's breaking. Eight ball does go in, one ball. One, two, three around. The seven doesn't fully cooperate, although the combination is something of an option. These are quite tricky when both are close to the rail, but as pure as his queuing is we would expect to see him take on this 1-7 not an easy shot by any stretch though he has a slight angle initially to start things off very easy to uh, miss hit these Beautifully done there. He's trying to decide where he'd like to be for the two ball. Probably one, two across, just north of the side. This should be okay. He might have gotten a hair flat. I think he can just stop there and apply a little left hand spin after he plays the three to hold up the cue ball for the pink four on that side rail. He might be drawing to the rail and out. 
Looks like he's taking a pretty aggressive sort of practice swing. And he's done beautifully. He has to manufacture this slightly, a bit straighter than he would have liked. So he'll have to punch it to the rail and out maybe, or just cheat the pocket slightly and stun over. But he should be OK here. Nicely done. It's the same dynamic in pool as it is in snooker. When you make a mistake, you have a rack or a frame one, and you err. What happens next? So, so often is that your opponent gets in early in the next rack or frame, runs it, and makes you feel even worse. <laughs> so true. Touch delicate, not a not a formality, but he's done very well with it. Stuns it over to almost the exact center of the table, and all he has to do is pocket this six, and he'll bounce out naturally for the nine wherever he likes. End of the day, it's seven five, and uh, this is far from over. Well, Joshua Filler led 7-3 and had the eight ball down the rail when it was looking like 8-3. You thought maybe Sanjin Pelovanovic will have to stop thinking about being on the loser side. That could still be the case, but now in this match, he's right back in the reckoning. Only two adrift. In Atlantic City, this is no stroll on the boardwalk for Joshua Filler now. Rack 13. Sanjin Pelivanovic to break, trailing by seven racks to five. Brendan Moore, the referee, just announcing the start of rack 13. Pelivanovic trying to get within 
a single rack. Corner ball down. A little bit unlucky for Pelovanovic that the one struck the point just north of the side and careened back towards the rack area. Had it not, he probably would have had a nice look at something. Here he'll have to push out. Never an easy task to push out to a guy like Filler. Maybe he can see just enough of the one. Pardon me, he's looking at it now. Perhaps he even has a look at it in the bottom left. I believe he does. Well, easy shot, naturally. He's overcut it, but played a, a two-way shot of sorts. Missed it on the pro side, as they say. We'll have another look at Filler's wildly savvy kick safety sort of game. So savvy that time, though, Phil. And as you said before, can he... Cut the lead to just one rack. It sort of doesn't feel that way in a sense watching the match, but if he can clear these 7 6, as, uh, things are heating up here. He's such a, a sharp potter. I think the missed eight ball was a shock to the system. Extension, please. Yeah, I think so as well. And, and right now he's trying to navigate. The one to the three, of course, and then the three to the four. So this is this is not without its discomfort. Perhaps he's trying to spin between the three seven. He runs into the seven, but it'll be okay. He has a nice angle here to possibly play the four. In that bottom corner, he was just looking at where he'd like the cue ball. If he can hold it up and just pull it over to the side where he's bending over the table, he'll have a nice look at the four. Okay, he's come beneath it. Lovely. Take this shot for granted. He's shown the respect it deserves. Perhaps a hair straight on the five. of this length players will play hundreds of shots certainly in the hundreds but it's always one that sticks out and right now the eight ball in rack 11 has switched the pendulum well true words never spoken and as you said it was 8-3 in, in the blink of an eye. Now it's 7-6, and Pelovanovic has shown a lot of heart and grit here on the comeback trail. Awfully smooth. Absolutely, it sets things up beautifully, doesn't it? By the way, the winner of this match, which is still very much up in the air, will take on in the next round either Vojcik Shevchik or... Aloysius Yap, Poland against Singapore there. And that match is just about to begin over on table 12. Mickey Krause now 9-7 up on Billy Thorpe. Roland Garcia 8-6 up on Naoki Oi. 
Schnigotsky against Grabber. That's 6 5 to the pole. Shea, Chia Chin, and Jason Shaw are having a terrific tussle. 7 7. Max Lechner in command against Daniel Schneider. Max playing to the max, leading 8 3. Marco Schuter, 9 4 upon a player who played for the USA in last year's Moscone Cup, Chris Reinhold. And now Chang Jun Lin has regained the lead against Jeffrey Ignacio right, at 9 8. Sanjin Pelivanovic to break, trailing by seven rights to six. Can he tie it up, the youngster? Well, he has a great break. He's been making that eight ball consistently, corner ball rather, and the one has been banking one, two, three rails around to where he stands. Cue ball got kicked a little bit out of where he was trying to keep it. But nonetheless, he, he does have a bank shot he could elect to try, or at the very least, an initiative retaining sort of shot, playing a safety of some kind. By the way, we briefly dipped into table two a while ago. All of the action over there is available on the Matchroom YouTube channel. And already Niels Fyan leads Kelly Fisher 2-0. Make that 3-0. Did leave Joshua just enough air. Oh, and he's handled that quite nicely into that same pocket where he bobbled the eight, which sometimes can, can get in a player's head, but... Uh, I'll tell you what, Nick, if he was 10-0 up against a nobody, the one ball he's just knocked in was excellent. In these circumstances, exceptional. Yeah, so true. When you're on the verge of going up 8-3 and all of a sudden it's 7-6 in the blink of an eye and you've been in the chair for a while faced with that shot, to just get right up and split the hole, you know, is a reminder of what we're dealing with here. Perhaps a touch thin, hesitated a little bit. Giving the shot a bit of respect. Momentarily, he'll be extending the lead to 8-6. Great match here on the feature to start day three off of the U.S. Open. We've had plenty of entertainment on the main match table over the first two days. Now, though, we have got a cracking contest. It is thrust and counter thrust. And Sanyan Perlovanovic finds himself two behind again. Joshua Fuller illustrating just what a, a fine competitor he is. Digging deep, potting a, a wonderful one wall and doing the rest from there as if it was putting butter on bread. You might have recalled yesterday that Sharik Saeed gave Shane Van Boning a little more trouble than we anticipated. Well, over on the one lost side of the draw, he's on the verge of victory against Anthony Megalino. Saeed leads 10-4. One lost side winners in this session also. Joshua Shane Walford, Radislav Babica from Poland, Beda Alawadi and Hunter Lombardo. Looks like the two has gotten in the way of the one, so Joshua will have to navigate these uncertain waters. Safety here does not look so simple. He can see the right side of the one, but if he hits it into the rail, it'll be careening into the pink four. And if he hits it very thinly, it, it isn't as if 
the shot is clear cut. Curious to see what he elects to, to come with here. He might even push out in some capacity. That's been a recurring out, theme in this match, hasn't it, Nick? You think the one is going to set up, and then there's always some kind of intervening ball there. It has. Sanjin, your choice? Yes, push out, and surely Sanjin is simply forced to accept the task and try to figure this situation out. Looks like he can hit the left side of the one and just kind of come down to where he just rested his cue between the 5-8 and try to leave Filler in a difficult situation. Take the bank on a two way shot of sorts. He's left Joshua some air. He doesn't seem too thrilled about this because he knows in a few seconds he might be frozen against the red three with the cue ball. He's hoping to just have a little bit of air, but. Yeah. So we'll see what Pelovanovic responds with here. This is a rather dreadful situation to be in, Phil. Yeah, this is DEFCON 3. He's looking at the at the route to the one. One rail, top rail and straight Extension into the one. Goal. Doesn't look so simple. The nine somewhat impedes a part of the one. He might want to come one, two behind the seven and spin into the one in some capacity off of that side rail. Let's see which route he goes with. Looks like he is using left hand spin. So he'll be trying to come one, two, possibly even three rails into the one. And he's done very nicely with it. That's a beauty there. That's what you call crisis management. What an escape and what an outcome. Yeah, and let's see what's for choice for filler here. There are a lot of balls that he could use to, to try to re snooker Palovanovic. Extension call. This one certainly got away from Joshua. The cue That's ball in the corner. hole. Belovanovic trails 8-6, but clock, with ball please. in hand here. Filler a little bit disgusted in the chair right now. Yeah, no clusters, no potential problems. All of the balls in the open. So Samuel Filovanovic has got one guilt-edged opportunity to pile on the pressure. Let me quickly tell you two more results in from the winner's side. Marco Schuter has beaten Chris Reinhold 11-4. Chang Junlin, dark horse for this, I tell you. Maybe not even a dark horse, a, a realistic contender. He's beaten Jeffrey Ignacio 11-8. And Mickey Krauss on the hill. 10-8 up on Billy Thorpe. Touch flat here. He would have liked a little more of an angle to just bounce off the rail down a center table. Here he'll have to pinch it back a little bit or maybe just accept the uh, distance on the purple five. Does pinch it back and he's done very nicely with it. These guys make those shots look so easy where you draw the cue ball four to six some odd inches, but this can go awry when you're hitting the ball low, applying backspin, but. Nicely navigated here. This has really been a nip and tuck affair. And at the end of the day, Pelovanovic is 
has played very well thus far. There have been a few hiccups, but there have been a few hiccups for filler too. Four and a quarter inch pockets on the feature table in front of an awful lot of people, and they've both showed a steady nerve and, and a lot of knowledge and, and just execution. Yep. And this is exactly what we all forecasted. After the walkovers come the pitch battles. Sanyan Polovanovic is not going away. The defending champion is having to pull out all of the stops to go through. Right now, Filler's lead could not be any more slender. It is only 8-7. Well, it's been a fantastic one thus far here on the boardwalk. 8-7 filler. Missed an uncharacteristic eight ball to go up 8-3. to three. And Pelovanovic has really capitalized on opportunities since then. We're in store for a dynamite close here. Rack 16, Sanjin Kalivanovic to break. Trailing by eight, racks to seven.
This has been something of a theme of the match. While both players have broken tremendously well, a clear sight at the one has not always cooperated. They'll have a very easy safety here to just roll behind the eight and, and leave Filler in a, in a pretty bad spot. During the break, I popped out to the loo and I can tell you what, Filler left the arena, closely followed by wife Pia and he's Greatest supporter, they had a little conflag outside and had a little talk about how things were going. And the look on Joshua's face, and indeed on the face of Pierre, was one of concern. Interesting. I, I, I was going to ask what the uh, energy was like, and that's a oh, foul, foul, Phil. So Boy, huh? perhaps you did glean some concern, and, and there's more reason to be concerned now. It looks like 8 8. Start the clock, please. Hate to imply it's preordained, but the one, three, four, five, eight, nine are all sitting there for a player of this caliber. This is a 10 of 10 run out type of situation. And you can trace all of this back. Sorry for the repetition, but it's worth going over this. You can trace all of this back to the start of the 11th rack. Phillip was going great guns. He was on his way to yet another clearance of the table. It all looked quite routine. And then, lo and behold, down this right-hand side rail to this right-hand top pocket, he missed the eight ball. And ever since, Sanyan Perlovanovic has had a new lease of life. He's beginning to think, he's beginning to realize he could win. It does look like the belief is there. It looks like he's let his stroke out a little bit too, almost as if he's gaining confidence. This is the sort of player, if you give him too many chances, he's gonna go. And uh, he's showing his caliber right now. The eight to the nine warrants respect, he'd like to get somewhere comfortable on the eight to simplify things. And it looks like he's done nicely with this to follow one, two rails around just past center table to leave himself a nice look at the nine in the bottom left in all likelihood. To be a touch careful with these on the slippery cloth, the new cloth. Extension call. Using his extension here, why not? Gonna apply right hand spin and try to come one, two rails out to give himself a nice simple look at the nine. And this is a hair short, Phil, so this will test his nerve greatly. That's actually more than a hair short there. Well, it's absolutely on the 50 yard line, isn't it? He should pot it, but boy, this is no gimme. Indeed it is. No, it isn't. Not a gimme, but down it goes, and it's 8-8 here in Atlantic City in the U.S. Open. What a match. What a match indeed, and the great thing about today is that we've got so many great matches going on all around the arena. And to tell us about them, here's Carl Boys. Cheers, Phil. Yes, we were speaking about Jason Shaw before. He's leading 10-8. That's a tight match. Very, very tight indeed. And another tight match, Billy Thorpe was 5-0 down against Mickey Krause. It is now Hill Hill. We promised on day three there were going to be tight matches. Alex Pagalayan's losing 9-7 on the other side of the arena. Also, Roland Garcia, he was leading New Kioi, but he's now trailing 9-8. He's one of the fans' favourites. Europe's Dennis Grabe is leading Mateusz Nogoki 9-6. Also, Oliver Sholnoki, who beat Shane Van Bonin at the World Pool Championships, he's leading John Mora 9-4. Two-time World Pool Masters champion Alex Kazakis, he's got a healthy lead 9-5 over Putnik. It's all going on, boys. Hope you're enjoying yourself up there, Phil. Rack Back 17. to you. Thanks, Sandy Cole. Pelibon Missing you, mate. Eight racks each. 
Max Lechner has won his match 11 3 over Daniel Schneider. The tall Austrian goes through. Look at this, Phil. My. The three to the four is, is delicate, but this is a tremendous look for Palavanovic to regain the lead for the first time since back four, I believe. Yeah, first time since 2-1. He led 1-0 in 2-1 since then. It's been filler in front. But the Germans' advantage is about to be erased, you would think. Nice angle here to bounce one, possibly two rails off and, and play the pink in that top right. Just rested his cue down there on the rail to signify where he'd like to be. Extension Jocking this up, extension used. This is the absolute key shot to this rack, the three to the four. And the rest is fairly elementary. 8-8 eight, eight against Joshua Filler at the US Open. Pressure cooker kind of situation. Center of the hole. And just a quick reminder, all this and Judd Trump to come. That's against Abdullah. Now, Shah Army. Trump's first real test of sorts, as they say. Looks like he's following this one, one, possibly two rails out. To get position on the six in some capacity. Needs that to go slightly. Believe he's okay to just pocket the six in the corner and, and follow down to where he just rested his cue. Side pocket precariously sort of involved, but it doesn't look like there's an issue body language wise to just drift forward. Oh no, oh my. Different ball. Same pocket. The eight stayed out for Filler when this match pivoted. And now it's the six that stays out for Sanyan Perlovanovic. Will he come to regret that? Well, it's probably a ball Nicky will never forget if he loses this match. I, I was going to say, if he goes on to lose, that, that, that's a haunting sort of miss. Digressions, the pockets are very tight, but still... I don't want to throw inexcusable around, but uh, it's tough. No, I think inexcusable is reasonable. It's a ball he should never have missed. And what, what a relief that was for Joshua Filler. Looked almost certain that he was going to go behind for the first time since 2-1. In fact, Filler now goes 9-8 in front. And of course, in the winner breaks format, he's breaking off in rack 18, looking to extend the lead and get onto the hill. Big news, I can tell you, a big name from American Pool has been vanquished. Billy Thorpe beaten by Mickey Krauss from Denmark, 11-10 and that great character, the court jester, I call him, Naoki Oi from Japan, has come through a tough test against Roland Garcia from the Philippines, winning 11-8. The winner of this will play Wojciech Shevchik or Aloysius Yap in the next round, and right now that's 2-2 early doors. Okay. Rock 18. Joshua Filler to break, leading nine racks to eight. And Pelovanovic knows full well he may not return to the table. This is far from out of the ordinary. Eight ball down, four ball down, one ball dresses up. Fairly beautifully for Filler, a little bit delicate. But uh, could 
easily see Joshua on the hill. It's tough. It's so tough to beat these guys. I'm sure it it was weighing on him somewhat. You're about to beat Filler on the TV table, or rather take the lead, 9-8 in a race to 11. Such a routine sort of six ball. It had to be respected, but he's still sort of peering away, Pelovanovic. It just, just bobbled, and, and like that, Filler's on the verge of, of going to the hill, Phil. Yeah, isn't it always thus? We were talking about this in the rack after Filler missed the pivotal eight ball earlier. The other guy ran the next rack rapidly, and now the boot is on the other foot. And as far as the intimidation and all that, well, Filler has earned that by traveling around the world for the last few years and ripping off international titles left and right. So it isn't as if he got lucky, per se, to induce these sorts of mistakes. You earn that by proving your mettle authoritative there. Joshua Filler finds himself on the hill just like that. Let's see if Pelovanovic even returns to the table, because these sorts of guys, when you give them chances like that, they tend to really capitalize, as, as many of us know. Sanyan feeling sick. Wow. What a turnaround. You know, we thought that Joshua Filler was in trouble. Right now, he's got a, a new lease of life, all because of the missed six ball from his young opponent. Can Perlovanovic fight back? We'll find out after the break. Where do we begin at the US Open where everything is happening at quite a pace? I can tell you Estonia's Dennis Graber has beaten Matthias Snigotsky 11-6. Jason Shaw and Shay Chia Chen have gone to double hill 10-10. Here, wow. Joshua Fellow looking to, to kill things off. 
Great match on the outer tables with Shaw. Hill Hill, as you said, and Filler is looking to clean things off. The 6 8 have tied up, so perhaps not so easy. I don't think he has an angle to pocket the one in the top right. Korean into the eight and then off to come back down for the two. Boy, he's over this one awfully quickly, so let's see. Selected to just get shape on the two and sort of take it from there. Perhaps pocket the two, four, five, and play a safety of sorts on the six. That wasn't his best there. I think he was trying to drift out further to play the, the four in this middle side by us. And he's weighing whether to take it on in the corner or just play a safety right now. Perhaps using the 6-8 to, to snooker Pelovanovic in some capacity. Let's see. Extension, please. Nicely struck. He might be drawing one, two rails around into the balls. This could be a very nice shot to watch. One, two, he's actually just playing for the routine safety, which seems very pragmatic. Pelovanovic is about to find himself behind the eight ball, Phil, as you said. Yeah, that was tailor-made, wasn't it? Everything suggests that Filler has weathered the storm. But you never know in this game. Very true, and, and frankly, Filler could have done a bit better with this one. If he froze him on the eight, he would have restricted the side rail. Now he's given Pelovanovic something of a look to kick into the six. Extension call. But naturally, he's still in a rather dubious position. He's lining up the kick. It's absolutely vital that he makes contact. Goes without saying, but if he doesn't, this match is a wrap. Does hit the six. Oh my, he might be getting some love from the eight. He doesn't, but the seven, I think, blocks the six under the bottom left. It's close. I think he can perhaps squeeze it past. I was right down the line of the oh, shot, right. and indeed, in it goes. Right you are, Phil. He did just squeeze it past. Nice call, and... Uh, this one looks like it's all but over. Wow. It was a great match. There was an old musical song, wasn't there? Joshua, oh Joshua. I'll tell you what, he's put himself through the mill today, and also his wife, Thea. But he's come out smelling of roses. In it goes, Joshua Filler desperately wants to defend here at the US Open. 